Mr. Speaker, the long-standing member from St. Christopher VI seemed to be afraid of something. But Mr. Speaker, I give God thanks for this golden opportunity. Mr. Speaker, to be part of history Mr. Speaker, and to be part of a team unity government that was mandated by the people to put this parliament and this country back on track <laughs> after it derailed under the leadership of a disgraced Prime Minister of 20 years. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I say that because I believe every tut moon salmon bagai in this country and beyond will agree that the words good governance were deleted from the lexicon of the member from number six. It was removed from the dictionary used by the members opposite. Mr. Speaker, I have sat here for many hours, yesterday and today inclusive. And I find my state, I find myself, beg your pardon, Mr. Speaker, in a state of ambivalence. When I hear the member from number two who is making her exit, when I heard her contribution to this bill, or the lack thereof, I am saddened. I am saddened, Mr. Speaker. Because her alma mater and my alma mater is the same. Our motto, Mr. Speaker, is the same. Principia non homines. And when I listen to the members opposite, inclusive of the member from number two, I'm saddened because we carry the same surname as well. Our surname is the same, like bird. My family, for full disclosure. And sometimes I ask myself if she is a lie bird. <laughs> but Mr. Speaker, having birth, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when I reflected on three or four years ago, when I expended every effort to ensure we got rid, and I'm speaking in a political context, Mr. Speaker, we got rid of the Douglas Labor Administration. I made it my business to traverse, to walk through every cook and nanny, no. nook and nanny. Nook and 
Look and cranny. Look and cranny, Mr. Speaker, to all the alleys. All, all the alleys. All the alleys. Just more than that, you see. Throughout Newtown. I walked up the hills in Frigate Bay. Through Bird Rock to make certain that we got rid of a government that had failed the people of this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said about the director of audit today and yesterday. And I want to submit that those on the opposite benches were mixing up the role or the roles of the director of audit and that of the public accounts committee. And I say so, Mr. Speaker, because if one takes a glance at the Audit Act, Mr. Speaker, the Audit Act Cap 201 revise as at 31st December 2002. Mr. Speaker, sections 9 and 11 of that act is very clear, or are very clear, Mr. Speaker. Section 9 of the Audit Act cap 20.01 is straightforward. And with your permission, Mr. Speaker, I read. Section 9 refers to the Public Accounts Committee. And it reads, and I quote, at the request of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, of the National Assembly, the director of audit or any other member of staff designated by him or her shall, underline Mr. Speaker, shall attend meetings of the committee in order to assist the committee. Which committee, Mr. Speaker? The Public Accounts Committee. Why I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, that they were mixing up the roles as well? Because under Section 11 of the Set Act, the Audit Act, it refers to special assignments, Mr. Speaker. And it says, and I quote, the director of audit shall perform, on the line, shall perform such special assignments as may be required by the National Assembly or a committee of the Assembly or as a minister or such officer authorized by him or her so request. This isn't the law. The committee can make that request or can assign or has the authority to give special assignments to the director of audit. It is clear here, Mr. Speaker. So the role of the director of audit, Mr. Speaker, is clearly 
enunciated in the Audit Act, as I just intimated. And Mr. Speaker, if you even just go back to the SEDAC and Section 6, which speaks to the duties of the Director of Audit, it reads, Mr. Speaker, quite clearly, one, the director of audit shall, shall make such examinations and inquiries of public bodies as he or she considers necessary to en enable him or her to report as required by the ZAC. And the member from number 10 elaborated this morning in respect of the public cooperations, the SCASPAS, the NHC, the UDCs, and, and, and so on, Mr. Speaker. It goes on. The Director of Audit shall examine the annual accounts submitted to him or her by the Accountant General and shall express his or her opinion as to whether they represent fairly the financial position and results of operations of the consolidated fund for the year that ended. It goes on, Mr. Speaker. The Director of Audit may make such examinations and inquiries or additional examina examinations and inquiries of the accounts of any statutory body as he or she considers appropriate, Mr. Speaker. And the final section or subsection on the six is Subsection 4, which states, Mr. Speaker, the Director of Audit may conduct, may conduct, Mr. Speaker, an audit of a company, institution, association, or concern in respect of money provided by a public body, but such body, or uh, but such audit, beg your pardon, shall not include, shall not include, uh, Mr. Speaker, money provided unconditionally. But Mr. Speaker, go further, go further, Mr. Speaker. Because the supreme law of this land, Mr. Speaker, the Constitution, the supreme law of this land also speaks, Mr. Speaker, also refers to, Mr. Speaker, under Clause 76, Subsection 2A, and the Constitution speaks to the audit of public accounts. Yes. And Subsection 2A, Mr. Speaker, deals with the role, again, of the Director of Audit. And it says, Mr. Speaker, quite clearly, the Director of Audit shall, shall, shall satisfy himself that all monies that have been appropriated by Parliament and disbursed have been applied to the purpose to which they were so appropriated and that the expenditure conforms to the authority that governs it. 
That's straightforward, Mr. Speaker. And if you read section 70 of the current legislation in the in the uh, in the current in sorry in the National Assembly's Act or the Standing Orders, Mr. Speaker, it says under 70 section 4, it relates to the duties and the powers of the Public Accounts Committee. And it reads, shall be as follows. And what it says under section 4A, to ascertain that the authorized expenditure during each financial year, including supplementary expenditure, has been applied to the purposes prescribed by the legislature. Well, Mr. Speaker, when one reads this legislation inserted within the standing orders, the word duplicated or duplication comes to mind. But what this bill is doing, Mr. Speaker, this bill before us is making the process more effective and more efficient. And in everything you do, Mr. Speaker, you can map a process. I am sure when the member from number six woke up this morning, he brushed his teeth. Me, I went to the solid waste. Then I washed my face. And you can map that process every day, Mr. Speaker. Everything you can do, you can map a process. You're going to the bank, you can map a process. You fill out your withdrawal form or your deposit form, and so on. So what this is doing, what this bill before us is doing, Mr. Speaker, is to map a process as it relates to ensuring that the public accounts are in order. It makes sure that there's a process that is more effective and more efficient. Its powers and duties are now more clearly defined. The powers and duties of the PAC are now more clearly defined, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, when I hear the, the members from, or the members opposite, Mr. Speaker, when I listen to them, Mr. Speaker, it is quite clear, Mr. Speaker, that the roles it is quite clear, Mr. Speaker, rather, that they do not understand, it seems. They do not understand that the roles of the Director of Audit and the Public Accounts Committee, they complement each other. Yes. That's what they're for. They must complement each other. That's why we're here with this new bill, Mr. Speaker. The Public Accounts Committee relies on the findings of the Director of Audit to conduct its hearings and to issue its report in accordance with Section 9 of the bill. That's what it is doing, Mr. Speaker. And section nine of the bill today, before bill before us today, is quite clear, and it is in conformity with section seventy subsection six. And section nine reads, Mr. Speaker, under the caption annual report, it says. The committee shall report 
to the National Assembly in accordance with Section 70, subsection 6, Mr. Speaker, of the standing orders and prepare a report on the performance of his duties of each financial year to be laid in the National Assembly. The Public Accounts Committee are not mandated to give us a report every month. It says an annual report. You're making noise about the director audit or reports once per year. But the PAC would, would also report annually. It says so. Every, annual report. Every entity is still there is one annual Of course. Once, once a year. Come for the reports, come. So don't try to fool the people about the Oregon City audit, the director, the audit report once a year. You know, and when you see the audit report, Mr. Speaker, he don't like it, you know. He don't like it, Mr. Speaker. Right? But, Mr. Speaker, I'll get to the audit report later on. But, Mr. Speaker, the effectiveness of the Director of Audit will and can only be enhanced by the conclusions and the recommendations of the PAC. They must complement each other. This song and dance about something to hide and what is it is nonsense. It borders on absurdity, especially coming from someone who was leader in this country and minister of finance for almost 20 years. Absurdity, ludicrous, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the P Public Accounts Committee and the Director of Audits, together, together, they must play an essential part in government's financial accountability. And not just in government's financial accountability, but accountability to this parliament, to this National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. That is why, that is why, Mr. Speaker, the independent role exercised by the Director of Audit is crucial, is critical. The Constitution stipulates that under 76, subsection 7, 5. And it says, in the exercise of his functions under subsections 2, 3, and 4, and 5, the Director of Audit shall not, shall not be subject to the direction or control of any other person or authority. We want to run director, the Director of Audit round and round. Eh? Huh? Come on! It's independence. It's independence, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, just listen, man. Just listen and learn. Just listen and learn. You know? Listen and learn. You're taking long to learn. That's your problem. But, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, a lot of song and dance was made about about corruption yeah. and transparency. Yeah. And if I look to the East, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, if I look to the East, I am seeing the face of corruption before me. Yeah. Yes. So when they talk about corruption, Mr. Speaker, mm. I am baffled. Yes. 
If I look to the northeast, Mr. Speaker, I see the face of corruption before me. Yes. And that's on the, the east is on the other side of this National Assembly, Mr. Speaker. So when they talk about corruption, I am baffled. Yes. They ask the question, what do we have to hide? The member from number nine gave us a little thesis or a little crash course, Mr. Speaker, on the two planks upon which Team Unity was rocketed, those are my words, rocketed into government. Yes. One, he said, our prosperity agenda. Yes. People bought us to it. Our prosperity agenda. I went down to the ferry dock for lunch. And you see the hustle and bustle yes. down at the ferry dock. People coming from Nevis, going to Nevis. Right? There's so many people offered me something to drink. I felt bad to refuse it. All I had down there was uh, a, 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 some selfish cake from Jasmine. Jasmine, don't talk about it. But Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the member from number nine spoke about the other plank. Good governance. Good governance, Mr. Speaker. What do we have to hide, the hacks? What is there to hide? The reason I submit that the member from number six who acted or who had responsibility for finance for nine, 20 years in this country, never for one year did you make provisions in the budget estimates for a pact to function. Never. You never did. Eh? There could not be a pack if there was a budget. We learn. We learn in, in the business. If you don't have a budget, you can't have a project. By now, we should learn that you never made one provision to fund the operations of a public accounts committee in your nine, 20 years as Minister of Finance. But never functioned. That's why it couldn't function. Nonsense. And what we are, nonsense? When did you? Nonsense. I looked to all the estimates. You never, one day, nonsense. one year, never made provisions. One Never allocated anything in your estimates for the pact to function. And I, I am not the Minister of Finance. And I guarantee, I guarantee that this Minister of Finance will make budgetary provisions for your pact, for your pact to function. You know? No pact. Nothing. But you see, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you see, you see, Mr. Speaker, the question was asked, what we have to hide? And I believe, Mr. Speaker, what the members opposite were trying something called reverse psychology. You know? Reverse psychology. Trying to fool people. Yes. But I will ask them what they have to hide. Yes. Because, Mr. Speaker, you asked a pertinent question, Mr. Speaker. You asked the member from number 11 if the PAC can look back. Yes. And as a lawyer, he danced around the response. He danced around it. But they don't want to look back there. But you can look back. But why he don't want to look back? He can look back of his, to his 20 years of mismanagement 
and impropriety in government. Look back at the contracts. I want that to be brought to me with this point of order. Will you do things in proper? Yes, I have for the point of order. Um, Memo number one, the use of the words and the acquisition level of that. Memo number six, which to me you are you are clearly for him. I would ask you to draw the use of the word. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, um, I have an abundance of respect for the chair and for you personally. But I, I've said it oftentimes that I'm a part-time journalist. And as a good, or rather, good journalism mandates that you get as close as humanly possible to the facts. And these are the facts here, Mr. Speaker. These are the facts. A contract signed yes. by the member from number six yes. on the 14th of November, 1999. Yes. Mr. Speaker, again, I ask that the label and the accusation of impropriety I'm, I'm on getting my that. part I'm getting be withdrawn. I don't see how a signature in my but, but capacity let me finish, let me finish. as the Minister of Finance of a government let me finish, is Mr. anything Speaker. that is improper. Yes, Honourable I really want to insist on this. Honourable Member for Number One. Yes, sir. Um, you, you leveled an accusation at the, the, the Member for Number I Six right in his capacity. Mr. This is the evidence here. You cannot be an accuser. It must be improper. No, but Honourable Member, that matter that you're going to refer to is is, is not is not before me. It's I, I, I mean, appreciate you, you so. Yeah, but I think you you then now places the this, the, this chair in a position to actually review immediately the report the and pack, come, the to, can, the pack come to a conclusion. No, you can't. But you can accuse me before the pack does it. Let the pack no, do it. No, Mr. Speaker, so that's the whole no, point. No, no, Let the pack do it. For now, just withdraw the use of the, the word. Uh, the accusation that you leveled against the member. I said that. Yes. What was the accusation? And, and move on. What was the accusation, sir? Just to yes. be clear. No, just withdraw impropriety. the accusation towards the member that he, he, he was involved in impropriety. Okay, impropriety. Mr. Speaker, I rescind the proposition. Is that, is that okay with you, sir? Well, it's not okay with me, it's okay with you too. Okay, come, let's continue now. Yes, let's continue now. But, Mr. Speaker, it must be improper. It has to be improper, Mr. Speaker. Don't say that. If you have a contract, a contract of over $25 million and all you see is rum sum figures, it has to be improper. No bills of quantities, no BOQs. Uh, it has to be improper. It has to be. What you have to hide? Mr. Speaker, if he is going to go back down that road, I'm going to have to insist again. That what? Because I do not draw up contracts. But you sign them. Whatever is given to me to be signed uh -huh. has been vetted by the legal department and the Ministry of Finance with technical team. Uh -huh. I am not going to accept that. Yes, and honorable we are not in a, he's not in a court of law. He has not proven me to be improper in anything I, that I've done. I accept it. I will accept the point um, being insisted upon by the member for number six. You, my understanding as to what transpired earlier was that an, a specific accusation was made towards the member for number six. And I received it, sir. Right. I received it, yes. Right. So I think we should continue from that point. Yes, sir. And, and try not to reintroduce it by no, another, I, I, by I, another I route. No, I didn't the point. I said it, it mm. has to be improper, mm. Mr. Speaker. Mm. It has to be improper for counting on all purposes when you have a $25 million contract with one lump sum figure. It has to be improper. Okay. And you are Minister of Communications. Huh? And you talk about value for money. 
That is what the PAC should investigate. The value for the $25 million. But I'll move on, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I believe that the member opposite and minister, the minister of finance for nigh 20 years, he never funded the operations of a public accounts committee because he had something to hide. Mr. Speaker, again. See? No, I'm not going to allow this. <laughs> to <laughs> but you said you yeah, so what we had to hide. You cannot say that I had something to hide Very because precise. there was no financing for a pack. Mm -hmm. I don't want a pack. Well, yeah, I did everything that I was expected no, to do. No, you did not fund it. You did not fund it. You cannot say I have something to hide. That is an accusation I will not accept. Well, you could actually if you Mr. Mr. Speaker, you can't what? ask me that. What you did you have to hide? That. Order, order. Okay. What did you have to hide? Order. Was there anything to hide, Mr. Speaker? Was there anything to hide, Mr. Speaker? Why the pack never worked? Um, okay, I, I believe the member is waiting for a particular ruling. He, he, so, he, he said a point of order? He didn't say a point of, of order. Of course I said a point of yes, order. Sir. So what we do, honorable member, yes, sir. we draw the usage of the word, he had something to hide, <laughs> and we phrase and move on. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes. I'll be guided. What was there to hide, Mr. Speaker? <laughs> what was there to hide? <laughs> that for 20 years, the pack was never funded. He was is it, finance. Ask him. Is it because, Mr. Speaker? <laughs> You said not to fund it. Is, it, is it because, Mr. Speaker? If you were on your feet, I will answer you. Mr. Speaker, I've been disturbed here. You're lucky you're not on your feet. I would answer I'm, you. I've been disturbed here. Because you're a liar. Uh, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> That's the whole point. You're a liar. Mr. Speaker, what you're was there to hide? I said not to fund Why the pact was never you're funded? You're a lying liar. That's by the Minister of Finance <laughs> for nine twenty years. Yes. Is it because he was afraid that the, the Public Accounts Committee would have investigated the $16 million overrun on the bypass road, the F.T. Williams bypass road? Is, the, is, it, is that the reason why the park wasn't funded? Why was that operationalized? Yeah, that was a good thing for the huh? investigation. A 16 million dollar overrun on a bypass road. Hmm. Huh? That, that could have been 16 million dollars. Huh? Mr. Speaker, what was there to hide? Why the pack was not funded? Is it because? If, if it was allowed to do its work, the public or the parliament would have had a report establishing where the $6.5 million that was spared to Speed Tech Energy Sankis Davis Limited, whose sole director still is. The Labour Party organizer. The PAC would have known about the LED bulbs, about the solar panels, about the $16 million that went to Speed Tech Energy Circus Davis Limited. What is there to hide? Who is Speed Tech Energy Toll Director? The Labour Party organizer? Is this something to you? Member from number three? Yes, yeah, some, some Lincoln may not say. Who that is? Mr. Speaker, they ask a question what we have to hide. So you're asking the same question now? I ask the question to him and the members opposite. What was there to hide? Why it did not fund the pack for 
Night 20 years for them to do their work. Night 20 years, Mr. Speaker. After 20 years, the Douglas Labour Party failed, failed to report on the SIDF accounts. He said it was a private fund. So the PAC could have, could have investigated SIDF. Eh? What was there to hide, member from number six? Why you did not empower the public accounts committee? Tell the parliament when you come to speak next. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I submit that under the Douglas Labour Party government, the PAC was not, was not empowered financially and or otherwise because the cost overrun of some whopping $6.5 million on a mooring boy budgeted for $2 million ended up at the cost of $8.5 million because of a cash man deal that the member opposite also signed. A cash man deal, he approved. Mr. Speaker, is that the reason why the PAC was not allocated funds to do its work for 20 years? What was there to hide? I asked the same question you, that you asked over there. Mr. Speaker, the member from number six talk about cronyism. Imagine cronyism. And Mr. Speaker, cronyism is one form of corruption. And I submit, Mr. Speaker, I believe strongly that the member from number six, as the minister who held the responsibility for finance for nine, 20 years, I believe that the PAC, the Public Accounts Committee, was not empowered fiscally. There's no budget allocations under your prime ministership for 20 years to allow the PAC to function. Because if the PAC functioned, it would have had the power and the duty to investigate the cronyism under your watch. See here, an exclusive agency marketing agreement to sell 192 homes at Beacon Heights. One man who never, ever participated in real estate business. But you gave him, you gave him the exclusive marketing and sales authority. When it is directly pointing to me, according to him, I gave no such contract to anyone. The language has to be correct here in this parliament. I gave no such contract to anyone, and he has to withdraw it. That's what you said. You said, I gave. No, I never said that. He said, I gave. You cannot have all language. I don't remember. I don't remember. I'm, I'm following this very closely. Please do so. And I suspect Please. I'll, be, I'll be calling Please. from time to time to make a ruling. Yes, sir. And um, I don't remember for, for number one, you, you did say, use the word you. And you, you gave him. 
So it left me to, to I guess, conclude that you're referring to um, a, a particular member, and in this case, member for number six. He his name before. He said um, it before. I in the preamble, don't he said it. Honor, honorable well, honorable you members. Say the yes. Uh, yes. yes. But okay. don't say me. There we go. <laughs> and that is why. The language has to be accurate. And that is why I, I, I would advise that. His administration. Try to use yes, yes. Um, yes. phraseology that would not the administration um, pinpoint a member that he headed for twenty years. <laughs> that is, that he is said, so you, can't, you can't tell him about language, you know. You can't tell him about language. I did Spanish, you did biology, right? When I did Latin, you did physics. You know, Why English, Why English. What about English, Mr. Speaker? His administration, Mr. Speaker, nothing happened in administration without him knowing. Ensured, ensured, Mr. Speaker, that a friend, a very close bosom friend of the members opposite, landed an exclusive sales and marketing agreement to sell 192 houses at Beacon Heights. I could talk about it Sunday afternoon when we get talk about it. And each house was over, cost over a million dollars, Mr. Speaker. They were under the CBI program, 400 US dollars, 400,000 US dollars. Multiply that by 192. Massive Mr. Agus weak point. Then deduct 6%. Millions of dollars one man would make. But God is in the midst of everything. And that man couldn't even sell 10 houses. <laughs> <laughs> 10 houses he couldn't sell. When he contact was signed, Mr. Speaker, August 2010, August 2010, couldn't sell 10 houses, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it took over thirty-four years. I go back to independence. And a team unity administration, Mr. Speaker, will empower a public accounts committee. Mr. Speaker, a team of the administration, and ironically, a chairman, I believe someone has accepted the chairmanship already, gleefully. <laughs> yes, I think so too. And you know, he spoke to, in his letter, as leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, and his colleague and former AG to be members of the committee. And Mr. Speaker, he spoke to consistency with Commonwealth Parliamentary Convention. But he forget the bank, the motion of confidence. Yes. That was outside the Commonwealth yes. Parliamentary Convention. Good point. Good point. And for two years, he turned his parliament into a useless instrument. Yes. But he come now, in 2017, and he himself proposes that he be the leader, or he as leader of the opposition, be the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee. And the public conventions. You know, but Mr. Speaker, low is on the half story, you know, my grandmother just said that. Because I think somebody mentioned this. But I have to repeat it, if they did. 
In 1989, we spoke about that today. When you were the uh, Her Majesty's loyal leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, the then Shima's administration appointed the Premier of Davis as the chairperson, the member for number 10, beg your pardon, as chairperson of the PAC. And you raise holy hell. Holy hell. You, you took a beef with a member uh, from number 10. I took no beef with the member for number 10. You objected to it. It's a I objected to what I believe was a departure from what was the conventional practice. I have no problem with number 10. And he, know, he knows that. I had no beef with him. I took objection to the practice. No, 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 but you can't do that here. You can't do that here. Took objection. You took objection. I took objection yes. with the practice, the departure from the practice. That is what I did. You can't say I had a problem with number 10. Let me determine that. You can't say that. I said what? Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker come on. The member must withdraw those statements because they are being minuted. Mr. With Speaker, respect, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker what statement? What statement? that I took a beef with the member for number 10. I did not. <laughs> yes, I don't remember. Well, he's requesting. Mm. He's, he's, he's saying you're misrepresenting exactly. his position. That's, uh, that's my understanding. So he he wants, he he but he wants you to simply withdraw the word beef? he took a beef. Or, so just do that and let's move on. Mr. Speaker. He took strong objection. <laughs> strong objection. But you took a beef, that's the same thing. Yeah, no, he said with number 10, I didn't. Yes, he took strong objection. With the government. Because the member from number 10 accepted the position. And nothing was wrong with that, Mr. Speaker. Because the standing, standing orders oh. were very clear. Yeah. It says, there shall be a standing committee of the National Assembly to be known as the Public Accounts Committee. And, we are and he said the National Assembly shall from time to time appoint a member yes. of the committee to be chair person of the committee. Convention, but convention. This is the law. Yeah. And the, the, the Prime Minister then was right. Within the law, yes. he was within the parameters of the law to appoint the member from number 10. Yes. And you know, Mr. Speaker, what, what, what is ironic? Things changed in 1995, right? And he became prime minister. Sorry, the member from number six became prime minister. And he used the same National Assembly election that, you know, he used the same standing orders. I can't even say he had a beef with the leader of the loyal opposition. The member from number five, Hugh Halligo. But he obviously had strong objection to appointing the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, the Honorable Hugh Halligo. He's in Parliament. He has strong objections to that. Speaker, at a point of information. Uh, oh, come on, man. You can't pass. In, you can't pass. in, in point of information. You did it? Why can't I do it? You did it. Speaker, you point of information. Let me just clarify that. No, no, no. You can't determine that. Speaker does. I, I am recognizing member from number six. He has risen on a point of information. Information. Back in 1995. There was one member from the PAM party and two members from this. The Would you please government. let me speak? Shut up! Oh, I remember. Oh, <laughs> 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 
clearly. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I was saying that at that time there were three members on the opposition bench. And who was the leader of the opposition? Three members. Would you please wait? members. I have, I'm, I've recognized a member who is on his feet on a point of information. Let's listen to the member, please. Number six, continue. The convention and the practice, according to the Constitution, was that the member who commands those on the opposition side would be the leader of the opposition. The two members, for Nevis, nine and ten, they refused that appointment and suggested that the appointment be made to the member for St. Kitts, five. The practice, however, was that the main spokesperson of finance on opposition be the leader of the PAC. And that is what my administration worked on. And that is why the appointment was given not to the member for St. Kitts Five, but to one of the other members in Nevis. That was all. <laughs> no, but there's also this main spokesperson for finance. For finance. Satisfy the on a point of information. Full information, yes. I think the member for number six has not given the correct story. Yes. I, I really don't. He has not given the correct story. To indicate that the appointment of other than the member for number five was given to the chief spokesperson for finance. Mm -hmm. We had no such person. Right. <laughs> never. Oh, never. No, no, no. no, he, no, could, no, no, no. he could not have no. done that. Why not? Because I was the leader of the party. No. And I was the leader of the party. You were the one who was the leader. No, I, no, no. I was that the one who spoke who, on every he budget. Would, he would. He would. Mr. Mr. I, I think no, I was the yes. one, Mr. Speaker, who spoke at any response to the budget. I was the lead speaker at every time. But we decided, Mr. Speaker, at the time, that since we had our own matters to deal with, yes. we deferred to the member for number five yes. to be the leader of the opposition. And we yes. communicated that to the governor general at the time, yes. who agreed and appointed member for number five as leader of the opposition. So, so we have a little conflict of, of, him, of him positions on the other side here. At one time we're dealing with convention, at another time we deal with something else. But <laughs> I think that will come out in the washing time. Yes. When the pack meets, we will deal with that. Yes. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. <laughs> you can glean from the comments of the venerable member from number 10. It's been Nevis 10. Nevis 10. Who's been in this house perhaps as long as the member from number 6. Yes. And one can glean from his account of the, the issue and the information he provided, one can only conclude that the High Court judge was correct yes. when he said the member on the opposite side is a stranger to the truth. But that was not the point, Mr. Speaker. The point I was making that the then member from number five the Honorable Hugh Heiliger. Hugh, Hugh Carlyle Heiliger had an instrument of appointment from the Governor General as the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. 
And if he had to follow his conversion, as he says, he did not appoint him. He did not appoint him. And he was not wrong. I can't say he was wrong. Because the, 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 the legislation before us said the National Assembly shall from time to time appoint a member of the committee to be chairperson of the committee. But the point I was further making, Mr. Speaker, is that when he was in opposition, he cried foul. And when he got into government, when he played, like a game called foul? When he got into government, he did the same thing. Same thing. In, in, in accordance or within the parameters of the national, uh, of, of the standing orders. And he was right. I say he was wrong. But here he comes now. But he don't want to accept that he didn't do it. But here he comes now, Mr. Speaker. He, did the right thing. he comes now <laughs> and he says, I propose <laughs> that consistent with Commonwealth Parliamentary Convention, I, leader of the opposition, be the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee. And Mr. Speaker, that is what this bill. Your first hour has expired. It's gone? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 I love it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what? What am I interrupting? Well, what, what, what we'll do, I said what we'll do, um, exercise your right to request the extra time, and at the end of it, um, you may come back to see if okay. I'm willing to uh, offer you anything. I uh, request an additional 30 minutes, sir. The question is that the member is requesting an additional 30 minutes. Was it favor? Aye. Was it against? Aye, man. You can't yeah, stop it, man. You can't stop it. Now, what did you say? Talk to Mr. Speaker. I said aye. Oh, see? <laughs> Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, can I, can I freedom, man? You go freedom with that. Can I, do, can I freedom? That's your parliament. You go with it. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I made the point of the old adage my grandmother used, love so no have so. That was already me. But Mr. Speaker, I asked a question. What did the member or members opposite have to hide? Well, it took over, 30, over 20 years, Mr. Speaker, to empower, to finance, to give a budget allocation to the Public Accounts Committee. Is it because They did not want the PAC to investigate the reasons why over 125,000 US dollars, nearly 350,000 dollars, easy, was spent for facility charges. For Minister Nigel Carty from September 25 to October 8, 2011, to the Baptist Health International I don't think it is Baptist right Health Hotel. For a member of this parliament, point of order, point of order, of course, mm -hmm. sorry, point of order, to bring the private health matters. Mr. Speaker, let me public? have the opportunity me to finish. I do not believe that it is correct for a member of this parliament in any way to make reference to 
health matters, especially, especially of another member of this parliament and a former minister of government. I don't believe it is the right thing to do, especially since the member himself is not here. I do not think it is right. I do not think that that can help our debate in this house in any way if that is going to be the reference point. I don't think it is right. And I'm asking, I'm asking in the absence of the member that this be withdrawn. I don't think we should go down that route. We, we will never know where that can end. The public document. Um, I remember number uh, <coughs> number six. You are asking the chair to rule on a matter to do with a, a, a public matter in the sense that the honourable minister is referring to and reading from obviously a, a government document yeah. which speaks to expenditure of public funds. That's my understanding, that's my interpretation. So on that account, I, I am not in a position, I would not ask him to withdraw it. I, I just can't. You know, if, if, I will go a step further though and say that if in any way one can come back and indicate to this house that what the member is reading from is inaccurate or misrepresent anything, to do with public expenditure, I am willing to entertain that. But for now, it's a minister of government reading from a, an official government, pub, document. government document, a public document, yes. and that's 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 my rule. What I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, I have point heard of you, I have heard you, Honourable Member, you that you you don't you're giving your opinion. Yes, I've it's my heard opinion, you and I've given my ruling. I'm warning that this is the wrong thing. You do not know where it will end. I'm you warning see, that. Continue, okay. You see why when the solemn dance about private, yeah. the bill say here, uh, they must have meetings in private. Tell me the age, what the section is. Uh, 12, section 12. They say no, 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 no. Right? What the matter is for? Yeah. Right? Right? But Mr. Speaker, this letter Signed, signed by the then Chief Secretary, J. Llewellyn Edmead, dated November 24, 2011. It says, and addressed to Evelyn or Evelyn Mora of the International Account Specialists on the International Division of the Baptist Health International Baptist Hospital in Kendall Drive, Miami, Florida. And it reads, and I quote, Mr. Speaker, Dear Madam, we are pleased to forward to you two Senkis Nevis Angola National Bank Limited Drafts, number 003690, in the amount of $44,055, U.S. dated November 23, 2011, and number 003341 in the amount of $6,063.63 in respect, in respect of facilities charges for Minister Nigel Carty from September 25, October 8, 2011. The drafts are here. But, Mr. Speaker, there's an invoice attached with the total charges of $125,144. US dollars. So, why shouldn't the PAC investigate how those public monies were spent? Why shouldn't the PAC know? whether this was a loan of public monies to Minister Nigel Carty, and if so, was it paid back? What was his illness? The public must know. 
about his illness? What was the illness? Because then it, you know, it gets into okay, okay. maybe personal. Okay, okay. Yeah, yes. What type let's, of pain? Let's not go there. Yes. The Baptist Health International accommodate. I mean, what type of pain? You know? That's the question I ask. Was this the total amount on behalf of the minister Nigel Carty? What is there to hide? That's the question I'm asking you. What is there to hide? Bring yes, bring up mine. Bring up yes, bring up mine. Oh. No government pay for mine. Public money is the MP for mine. You might have to bring up his. Bring up his. Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. How the time going, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker. What is there to hide, Mr. Speaker? They talk about transparency. What transparency? Would the pack look at everything else? I want to pack look at the house in Bodrock that the member opposite built on the land that belonged to a poor young man on George Street in Newton. Poor young man, poor Shelley. Right? And he got the house duty free, benefited from public funds. Duty free. I, I don't think that it is right incorrect. For again the member to lay accusation, which is wrong and false, that a member of this parliament built his house on somebody's land. It cannot be right. Because that is not true. I said he built his house on the land it used to belong. It used, used to, belong. to belong? Yes. It was belong. It used to belong to a man. It used to it belong. Used to George Street. It used to belong. Yes. What does that mean? How we got it? How we got what it? does that mean? What do you mean, used to belong? You want me to tell you who you belong to? Used to belong. Uh, okay. Mr. Speaker, it's <laughs> about transparency. Right? I mean, this is ridiculous. Why, Why Mr. Speaker, should the pack go back and investigate this house that that was built by the former minister. Built by the former minister. It's, it's spending public money. What yes. are you talking about? Mr. Speaker. Do you mean by duty free public public money? Yeah. That's absolute nonsense. So you can look into every constituency. So you see where it has to be private? You see where it has to be private? No. What, what in private? What nonsense you talking about about in private? Members. Back is going to do nonsense like this? Oh, Come on. Mr. Speaker. Continue, sir. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Public money. Whenever you free, no is granted. In your accounts of the public. It must be public money. Whenever duty free is granted to anybody, anyone who gets duty free concession, it would simply mean that the Ministry of Finance will have to forego revenue that could be collected. It's public money. It's public money. Yes. The pack must know how much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, the yes, foregone, revenue foregone. What is foregone by revenue? Yes, yeah. revenue foregone. Yes. Can't come back. Yeah. Right? Yes. You know? Yeah. Can't come back. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, yeah. right? So if you want transparency, tell us about that. How much revenue? Well, had to be foregone for him to build a house for duty free concession and turn around as a first time owner he has not till this day lived in the house has not you know come on mr speaker that's what we want to hear well mr speaker mr speaker mr speaker Mr. Speaker, the member from 
number three, he's seeking attention all afternoon from me. And I really should ignore him. Just ignore him, not worthy. He's not worthy. But suffice to add that he has come he comes into this house and he pretends he's some paragon of virtue. And you should hear him. There needs to be checks and balances to avoid persons running rampant. Because they are all not saints in the halls of power. You know? Which saint, Mr. Speaker? Which saint will give up a nice cushy job in Tartola and come to St. Kitts to serve in a Douglas Labour government that was rampant with corruption? Which saint will do that? At a point of order. Yes. He's implying <laughs> things that are not accurate in this honorable house. He wasn't in Tartola, Mayor. Inferring that I gave up any cushy job to come here in St. Kitts and Nevis. That is my personal business. I decided when I wanted to come back here to St. Kitts to serve my country. Nobody made me do anything and I got nothing for it. It's classless and out of place. Mr. Speaker, which saint will give up a nice cushy job to come serve in a Douglas Labour government that was rampant with corruption? We spent, we do that, Mr. Again, Speaker. again, I am not going to accept that. We say, Mr. Speaker. I was not presiding over any government that was rampant with corruption. I will not accept those words. Well, it was. I will not accept those things. Okay, Mr. Speaker. The member is being deliberate, Mr. Speaker, because it would appear as if he thinks he can get away with it. I don't care what you say. I am saying he cannot label the government that I led in that way in this parliament. He's not in the streets. That was all the world. Well, I remember when I was six. <laughs> the rules are, are fairly clear. I remember, yes, I, I take it, you, you, I guess it's a point of order. It is but the rules are fairly clear in that no member should, you know, insinuate things against other members and a statement that a form of government was corrupt to me. It's just, it, it is just a harsh statement. Douglas government. I let it. And he said that I am corrupt. I am not going to accept that. He said Douglas government. Mr. Speaker, they're talking technicalities. I am talking about what the man is hearing out there, which is what you should be hearing with respect, Mr. Speaker. That is why you are the chairman. Yes, but I'm, I'm here mulling over the, 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 the point. And I'm of the view that it probably comes down to just a harsh criticism of a former government. It cannot be harsh and, and, and unless, when he's insinuating un that. Unless I'm minded that the, the member is, is accusing a particular member of, of corruption. I, I, I am not. With respect, Mr. Speaker, the government is led by ministers of government, all of whom were and are members of parliament. But you cannot, what I'm saying is that what proof does he have to say that this government I led was corrupt? We can't do that kind of thing. You ask that we, people, we bring evidence here from time to time. What does he have? Mr. Speaker, he cannot make those statements and get away with it. Mr. Speaker, there are three types of corruption. <laughs> Electoral fraud. There are three types of corruption, Mr. Speaker. Electoral fraud. Cronism. And nepotism. Wait, 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 wait. Three types of corruption. Yes. Elect I'm referring to electoral fraud. Is one. Yes. Is one. Nepotism. You're familiar with that. And cronyism. Yes. Which one are you? Mr. Speaker, so that explains to you. It's one. Oh, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> this member opposite, or the members opposite, Mr. Speaker. Convened a parliament yes. one Friday afternoon, Mr. Yes. Speaker. And in five minutes, yes. <laughs> in five minutes, the, the, the 
Yeah. The chairman yeah. of the Constituency Boundaries Commission, that's what it's called, yeah. Mr. Jenkins, mm -hmm. submitted his report yes. to the Governor General. And that report reached to the Parliament and the Prime Minister, led it in Parliament a resolution. Yes. And then it went, having been approved, was published in the Gazette. All that in five minutes. Five minutes. Five with that any electoral form fraud. I don't know what is, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. You know, I am not. I am not really a, a Bible scholar. You know, Mr. Speaker. I love that Parliament. And I see a local preacher here. A local preacher gone. But. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, reading verses 13 to 15. And when I hear the members opposite, including to the one I referred to earlier, I can only read from the Bible verses. It says, For such are false apostles. Deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it continues, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And that's why he's over there. <laughs> that's why he's there, Mr. Speaker. And he'll be there for a long time. Yes. He'll be there for a long time. Yes. Because, Mr. Speaker, the Bible scholars are familiar with the story about Paul. You should know that. You always talk in the Bible, <laughs> right? And who started the church of Corinth, think? Current, right? And I want this all to knowledge, but Paul left the church. And all kind of things happen. And all I will do, like Paul, is to plead with the members opposite to repent and avoid the further judgment of the people. Repent and stop trying bow, 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 point of order. Trying to shut us down. But that, Mr. Speaker, is about good governance. Back is about good governance. But the members opposite want the status quo to remain. That's what they want to do. They want the status quo to remain. They broke down every system in the government. Every system in this country, including this parliament, a former chief justice of the OECS Supreme Court, referred to the actions of the, the, the leader opposite. And he said he brought this, he brought this parliament into a useless instrument, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, when you examine the bill before this house today, when you examine the bill before this house today, Mr. Speaker, let us look at section two or uh, clause two which speaks to the interpretation and clause two Mr. Speaker
speaks to, sorry, the appointment, sorry, of the director of audit. And it says, or rather, clause three, beg your pardon, Mr. Speaker, subsection two, or subsection one, sorry. He said, the director of audit shall be appointed pursuant to section 82 of the Constitution. Uh, the bill before, sir. Sorry, the Audit Act, sorry. The Audit Act, beg your pardon, sir. Uh, uh, that's the Audit Act, sorry, Mr. Speaker. I, I, let, let's go back to the bill. You're right, you're on, on the ball, Mr. Speaker. Let's go back to the bill before us. The bill before us, clause two, speaks to interpretation. I picked up the wrong bill, sir. And it points out under section two. It speaks to the accountant general. And it said it has the same meaning as under the Finance Administration Act, cap 20.13. It also speaks to the director of audit, which has the same meaning as under the Constitution. And the financial secretary, Mr. Speaker, has the same meaning as under, under the Finance Administration Act. And if we look at the Finance Administration Act, Mr. Speaker, part two, of the Finance Administration Act relates to the control and management of public finance. And Clause 6, Mr. Speaker, of the Finance Administration Act, Cap 20.13, as a 31st December 2009, it speaks to the responsibilities and powers of the financial secretary. And it says, here Mr. Speaker, for example, I won't read the whole sections, but it says the financial secretary shall at all times have access to all ministries departments or places where accounting for services takes place or accounting records are kept. Move on to section seven, Mr. Speaker. Section seven, subsection 1A1. And it says, the responsibilities and powers of the accountant general Accountant General, and it speaks to his responsibility. It says here, Mr. Speaker, the Accountant General, with the directions of the Financial Secretary, is responsible for, one, maintaining the central accounts of the government so as to show the current state of the consolidated fund and the financial condition of the government. It says on the four, maintain, maintaining a system for the examination of payments to reasonably ensure that they are made in accordance with this act or the regulations. It goes on, is responsible for ensuring that a proper system of accounts is established in every ministry, uh, Mr. Speaker, department and service, and that all money received and paid by the government is brought properly to account. These are clear, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what we are seeing here, Mr. Speaker, the powers in the bill, the powers in the bill, there's been much elaboration. 
on section 8. Power to summon witnesses. And this bill, Mr. Speaker, is making it absolutely clear that the pack that will be led or cheered by the leader of Her Majesty Loyal Opposition may summon the financial secretary, a permanent secretary, as the chief accounting officer, and a permanent secretary, Mr. Speaker, according to legislation, is the accounting officer and shall be personally and pecuniarily responsible for all expenditure in every department in the ministry. Five minutes, sir? The extra time has expired. Oh, I'll just wind on this, sir. But, um, why, why not to go here? But, uh, you had earlier indicated yes. about um, additional time for what you consider that you lost. Yes, sir. So I'll use my discretion in three minutes. Three minutes? 15 seconds. Three minutes and 15 seconds. I'm grateful, sir. I don't know my bread for <laughs> So, Mr. Speaker, the power, the power of the committee, Mr. Speaker, to summon the financial secretary, a permanent secretary, as the chief accounting officer of a department of government or the accountant general to appear before it to give evidence and produce documents. But Mr. Speaker, I don't understand why the song and dance, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, as I said before, Mr. Speaker, that all these are the pack and the director of audit, their functions and their roles complement each other. And this bill is just putting things or mapping the process for effectiveness and efficiency as the Public Accounts Committee investigates the use of public monies. But Mr. Speaker, in supporting and fully supporting this bill, I have to conclude, Mr. Speaker, that the member opposite epitomizes a man versus himself. The member opposite who served as Minister of Finance for nigh 20 years provides a good example of a man versus himself because his own values and memories of his past self as Prime Minister for nigh 20 years no collides, it clashes with his current self as leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, with those few words, I commend this bill to safe passage in this honorable house, Mr. Speaker. May it please you. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS. St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.